so we continue this is the third part on that fight two and that's uh part six of our video on surgery we have a 67 year old patient complain of this dyspnea chest pain and weakness he's been ill for about five months so you yeah, think of the chronic and long term process right now i noticed the temperature is so febrile 96 per minute a little bit uh, tachycardic but if you go for the range of 60 to 100 you say upper normal vocal tremor over the right lung cannot be determined that's vocal fremitus percussion sound is dull percussion sound is dull so i'm sure you are thinking of different processes right now that doesn't exclude many things from the option breathing cannot be auscultated in sputum blood diffusely mixed with mucus what's the most probable diagnosis you see if it is tuberculosis one of the things about tuberculosis is that the question will make you think tuberculosis so this is not uh, uh, tuberculosis yeah the the looking at this together with this weakness weakness you can find in tuberculosis but again this question is not to work they tell us other things to point out and with this chest pain makes us think more of lung cancer than any other thing in this uh, option since we are already excluding tuberculosis so this is a patient with lung cancer who have been here for five months so just take note of this even though they are not telling us the result of ct and so on all right anytime you see abdominal sputum or meat slops they are they want you to just know that that is uh lung gangrene so this is a 52 year old patient complaining about pain in the right part of chest this there foul smelly abnormal sputum that is uh that's like gangrene and then the decision of like in form of meat slops the patient condition is grave, so this is present, percussion sound over the lung is shortened, and so what is it? Lung gangrene. Lung gangrene. Just think of that. Uh, we have a 65-year-old uh, female patient. Three hours ago, felt sharp pain, abdominal pain, eroded to the right scapula. The single vomiting, history of rheumatoid arthritis, little bit initial phase of shock, was lower normal. Abdomen is significantly painful and tense in the epigastric and right subcostal region there is positive symptom of parietal peritoneal mutation so we are having already in these patients uh signs of peritonitis what is the tactics of an emergency doctor every time you have such condition peritonitis in a patient i say one of those going to show you need immediate surgery so take the patient to the surgical department All right, 15 year old um, patient, pediatric patient, sense headache, nasal hemorrhage, sense of lower extremity. But the most important thing in this particular patient is that position in the femoral, in the femoral arteries or in the upper extremity and the lower extremity differ. You can see in the upper extremity you have 150 by 90, in the lower extremity you have 90 60. So, such, such uh, capopedal difference in in blood pressure is typical for coarctation of the aorta. I can see that systolic normal can be oscillated over uh, above the carotid. So when I just see this difference in the upper and lower extremity blood pressure, I'm thinking of we should think of coarctation of the aorta, aorta coarctation. Yes, occlusion at that point. So more blood can flow to the upper extremity than lower extremity. Spleen dimension, we are supposed to be having about 11 centimeters in its large dimension. Here we are having uh, splenomegaly. Our spleen is taking a lot of blood. If I know you are the one taking blood, I think I need to get rid of you. So you can see as result of that anemia is being developed and so on. What is the way of treatment in the patient that tells us there is splenomegaly, 15 year old patient? You can do it at this age. So it's splenectomy, nothing else in the patient, splenectomy. All right, if a patient is having tumor of the anal canal, and please take note, especially for that there is a squamous cell carcinoma. Where can it metastasize to? You know, the, like this also, also we can have it like one of the very common cancerous processes in the lungs. So, if a patient with squamous cell carcinoma of the anus can have its metastatic secondary metastasis to the lungs, to the lungs, don't uh, confuse it for liver. It's to the lungs. Just take note of that. Uh, frostbite 
patient, the patient first bite of both feet was admitted to the What actions to be taken? You try to apply like to be one bandage, bandage to create some one and then introduce vasodilating mechanism. Vasodilating mechanism or medications will also increase our warmth by two endogenous means. Anytime they are telling you about a patient that wants add fracture, you could actually predict that after looking to the option, you could predict that they want to tell you about an infectious complication. You say seven years has been having acute inflammation in the area of fracture, uh, some pulse. This is just use chronic osteomyelitis, long term fracture, and the surgery later the patients have infectious complications at that point. It's a sign of osteomyelitis, chronic osteomyelitis. All right, a patient was a patient had deep cut wound in the right thigh, and as a result of that uh, deep cut wound, the, the surgeon carried out primary wound closure with debridement. And four days after, you begin to have signs of prevalent inflammation. You can see prevalent distal from the wound gap, temperature rose to 39. What kind of wound complication developed? The fact is, this at the point of the wound is a wound abscess here, and that's why you have a pool in this. So, wound abscess, and the doctor should remove the primary sutures, drain the wound, and apply secondary suture. Okay, a patient has stab wound on its right foot on the fourth day after the injury, the patient body temperature was 38. Inguinal lymph nodes became enlarged and painful. Skin over them, what complication? might have developed. I'm sure sometimes you notice this maybe when you were very small you played roughly, you got injured in your knee and at the end after some day you begin to notice that your lymph nodes in the inguinal region are a little bit enlarged. So though it's not as complicated as this particular case, but these are signs of lymphadenitis. You just need to differentiate it from uh, lymphadenitis. But here they are telling not directly the uh, lymph nodes. Lymphadenitis is going to affect the the lymphatic channel also to the lymph node but sometimes you will see the the lines of the veins you will see red along the line so that's in lymphagitis but here they are telling directly of the lymph nodes it's a condition of lymph adenitis during a surgery 30 year old patient uh, dark ileo ilia conglomerate it was discovered into susception the intussusception in the patient or the intussuscipia, according to their grammar, was dilated to 7 to 8 centimeter, full of intestinal content and gas. What well, pathology led to the surgery? Um, this is signs of uh, invagination, invagination in the patient, invagination. Though after surgery, one of the most common things that we could have is uh, obstruction. Obstructions are a result of adhesions and we are not having that word there, so what's most likely according to the question is invagination or combined obstruction. All right, something is stealing blood right here. 50 year old patient complains about headache, weakness in his upper left extremity. Neurological symptoms become more intense during physical stress on the left extremity. Position on the arteries of the left extremity is sharply dampened, but it remains unchanged on the carotid artery. What is the most probable diagnosis? This, when they are telling you a correlation between the uh, carotid vessels and the upper extremity vessels, you, one of the major things to think of is a subclavian steel syndrome. There is a prosimal, there's an, there's a prosimal obstruction in the subclavian artery, and as a result of that, blood is going to flow back retrogradely from the vertebral artery back to the subclavian actually in the distal part so as to just compensate for the fact that there's obstruction to the upper extremity blood supply so this is a, that's what is causing the symptoms in this patient is a subclavian steel syndrome the subclavian artery will therefore slip blood from the carotid because enough blood is not flowing to it a patient with uh ischiorectal periprotitis can have infectious complication when they are diagnosed it is about the liver one major thing I can think of there is uh, a liver abscess, not any other thing. Eh? Boot Chiari syndrome is uh, is hepatic vein occlusion, and in the patient, they will to further give us signs of ascites, abdominal pain, and so on. So, this is a patient with liver abscess due to ischiorectal uh, periprotactus. Periprotactus. 
All right. When you are seeing squash tomato symptom, patient abruptly lost the sight of one eye. Examination revealed uh, 0.2 uh, eccentrically. Eye fundus has hemorrhages of different forms. Optic disc is aparemic in anamnesis general vascular pathology is recorded. Direct acting coagulants, direct acting anticoagulants were against. What's the most probable diagnosis? This is uh, this scratch to my symptom we see to think of uh, uh, thrombosis of the central retina vein. Central retina vein. Thrombosis of the they didn't tell that the patient is having diabetes or high blood pressure, even though they are telling us there's general vascular uh, pathology. So the process is the process is within the eyes. All right, this is a patient with anea and is causing acute pain. The anea couldn't be reduced, but on objective examination, during palpation, it was reduced back to the cavity. So just because it 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 was it couldn't be reduced before, and now on objective examination, you can reduce it. Doesn't mean that it's reducible. You just have to stay. It's completely reducible. So I have to keep this patient under surveillance for some time to know whether there's going to be need for surgery or not. But as far as the patient, as far as the pain disappeared and it was reduced back, just keep the patient for some time and do inpatient surveillance. All right, 55 year old patient felt suddenly sick in the hospital corridor. He was immediately examined by a doctor. Examination revealed that the patient's skin was pale, autonomous respiration was absent, uh, pulse on carotid arteries couldn't be felt. Pupils were midriatic. What action should be taken at the beginning of cardiac resuscitation? This patient need a blow. They need a blow to stimulate their heart uh, back to life. This is not defibrillation, please. Defibrillation, you use it in condition of patients that have fibrillation. This is not fibrillation. You cannot feel uh, carotid artery here and uh, so on. They didn't tell us anything about ECG result and so on. So this is a patient that is in need of a pericardial thump. A blow to the heart can get that act back to start uh, functioning. Patients with uh, multiple B stings, multiple B stings, notice the arteries, pulse is felt on carotid arteries, respiration is this. They didn't give us uh, any other information apart from that. Okay, skin is quite What? Drug should be given in this uh, first place. Even though they are not telling us the blood pressure right now, we want to prevent this kind of patient from going to shock hazard of multiple B stings. And we go to give adrenaline intravenously. Adrenaline in this kind of condition is given intravenously. If it's just uh, allergy, not they are not talking about shock and some other thing, might be giving prednisolone. But yeah, see the altruit and so on. It's adrenaline and the chloride intravenously. And in fact, when you see questions like this, when they are giving, I notice all the questions where they have to put the two together like this. It's adrenaline intravenously. And I know we've explained that already in internal medicine. 25 year old victim of road accident complains of chest pain, this near. Objectively, the patient is in grave condition. You can see pathological mobility of fragments of third to fifth rib on the right. Percussion repeats box sound over the uh, right lung. They are thinking of pneumothorax or so. Breast sounds cannot be excluded. What examination should be administered in the first place? You do chest x ray. That's the examination in the first place. You want to examine the chest x ray. What examination? Not treatment now. Examination. That's x ray. Okay. After pneumatic dilatation was fire stricture. Maybe in some condition of alkalisia or whatever, a patient developed acute intestinal pain getting worse when throwing head back and swallowing. Objectively, we have dilatation of neck veins, uh, drop beat ball signs of prolent intoxication, oliguria, and so on. You see, when you're having also, you can have dilatation of neck veins in some form of subcutaneous uh, emphysema, but in this, you see, emphysematous process of hepapatosia, what disease can be sucks? in this patient since, since there is uh, how do you put it now the, the pain arising as a result of pneumatic 
down dilatation. So yeah, they say what is this? The answer here is a superative mediastinitis. Superative mediastinitis. This is not condition of spontaneous pneumothorax. This is not spontaneous pneumothorax. We've seen previous question that pay attention to spontaneous. So this is superative mediastinitis because uh, there was dilatation of the oesophagus and there must have been perforation in the oesophagus. In this case, there must have been perforation for us to have these signs affecting the mediastinum. Um, this is a six-year-old patient who drank some colored fixy drink, feeling of pressure in the throat and so on. But the cause, you see, is this particular drink. Notice this heart rate and so on. What basic aid is most appropriate for the restoration of laryngeal breathing? Laryngeal breathing. Actually, in this patient, if you administer corticosteroid, all these things will be resolved. Will be like this. Condition of a very severe allergic reaction as a result of this fluid intake and corticosteroid will reverse that. We've seen questions like this and eight year old baby pull a nasal breathing and mucopulling discharge from the nose for a week. Examination if it's right, edema mucopulling discharges from middle nasal meatus. And of course, we know that it's not just. One thing that opened into the middle nasal, nasal meatus in this case, but here they said as well as the back of the pharynx. So the ethmoidal sinus opening is more closer to that region. This um, disease is ethmoiditis. Ethmoiditis. When a patient is having bronchial ectasis, we talk about a patient bronchial ectasis in croc. may also they will tell us maybe further of um, drumstick in extremities. So with affection of left lower lobe lung, of the lung, one of the major treatments in uh, bone characteristics after, after a long period of time is surgical approach to the lungs and that will be a lobectomy. Please don't confuse it with uh, pneumectomy. Here you are saying they should remove the whole lungs but this is just the left lower lobe that is affected. So that's a left lower lobectomy. Just remove that lower lobe. Alright. Four weeks after myocardial infarction, patient received acute heart pain, prolonged dyspnea. Patient condition is extremely grave, marks and risk of a swelling and trouble of neck veins. So maybe right now the, the heart is swimming in its own fluid. Peripheral pulse is absent, carotid artery pulse is rhythmic. You can see cardiogenic shock developing. What is the optimal treatment tactic for this patient? Is to drain the fluid around the heart. This is like a condition of acute cardiac aneurysm due to post myocardial infarction in the patient. So what you do is you do a pericardial sentences, drain it and the teracotone. As far as well of a year patient in severe contumitant pathology was injured during urgent fibroesophageal gastroscopy. This resulted in progressing of acute respiratory failure and collapse of left lung. Again, this patient is going to need uh, drainage. Drainage. So that's drainage of the uh, pleural cavity. Pungy to puncture of the esophagus. There's air. So this drainage of the pleural cavity is by the Buller method. I think it's also a passive method of drainage, as we spoke before. And just standard drainage and then give some antibacterial therapy to prevent like a condition we saw earlier of separative mediastinitis. A 17 year old patient complains of pain in the area of the left knee joint. Soft tissues of time, the affected region are infiltrated. Uh, joint function is limited. X-ray picture of distal metaphysis of the left femur shows destruction focused with periosti detachment. And here they are taking about a uh, cold mass triangle found at the defect border in the bone cortex. When they are telling you something about the cold mass triangle that is found at the defect border in, as far as it relates to bone, this is common in cancerous processes of bone. Like, and this is very typical for uh, air wings sarcoma, air wings sarcoma of bone. So what treatment is uh, indicated in this particular patient? The best answer is a palliative chemotherapy. The best answer is chemotherapy in this patient. All right, we have a 35-year-old victim of a road accident, injury to the right side of the chest. Notice the respiratory rate, tachypneic, uh, acosanosis, 
the space sounds over the right lung cannot be auscultated. Shell's program shows fraction of 6 to 7 when right, right pleural cavity contains both air and fluid with the fluid at level of it. So, you are thinking this is a condition of uh, hydronemothorax together. So, the shadow of mediastinum is displaced to the what first stage should be provided in the victim. In the victim. So, I think it's just better we divide this question to two and then continue from there immediately.